All right, so welcome, welcome. Guess this is my, I would say unboxing, but this is my unbagging review of my first purchase from militarysurplus.eu. Now, I'm in the United States, and I don't usually order stuff from overseas, so I'm unfamiliar with how some stuff works, but I was pleased with their website. No problems there. I filled out my initial order on the 7th of this month, September of 2019. It was 36 euros worth of goods and an extra 30 something of shipping, which the total was 65 euro. I paid that in PayPal, no big deal. And then coming Monday on the 10th, they emailed me stating that it actually required 21 more euro in order to get it shipped to me. Now, I thought that was a little bizarre, considering most of the time when you order something, the shipping is automatically calculated. And that's what the website apparently did. It, you know, calculated that I owed X amount and I paid my total and everything was supposed to be hunky-dory. But they emailed me stating I needed 21 more euro. So... I emailed them back and forth about that, and I ended up paying it. And then the next day, it shipped. So it shipped on the 11th, and it got from Romania all the way to Florida in the United States on the 16th. Cool. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is I spent a total of 87 euro on a bag. You, you'd think something traveling all the way across the world would be shipped a little bit more substantially than a bag. It's open there. It's open there. It's just hanging out. You know, cool, I get my first preview of what it is, but but still. I'd, I'd expect something a little bit more substantial than a plastic bag. Now, what I ordered, I haven't even opened this, as you see. What I ordered was a Romanian rucksack, a Romanian bread bag, and two Romanian canteens. I've been seeing these things all over the internet, and it decided, heck, I'll order them straight from Romania, you know, add a little extra pizzazz to my order, I guess. And, I mean, it was economical at first. 65 euro, I guess, wasn't too bad for all of it shipped, and then the extra 21 kind of made me go, eh, but whatever. I got it, here it is. So I haven't even opened it, I haven't even checked the contents yet. So, let me pause this video real quick. I'll crack open the bag and lay it all out and let's see what I got. Alright, so I just opened up the bag. And so far, I'm actually impressed. It looks pretty good. It smells like when you walk into a leather shop or, you know, someone custom making belts or something like that. It doesn't have that old surplus smell that, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love. But it's, an, it's a nice, pleasant supply, surprise, considering this is leather and canvas. Uh, let's see. I did put in the request to get all the leather straps that come with the bags. So hopefully I get that. So it looks like I got the strap there, strap there. This is the Romanian bread bag. Everything looks good here. Everything looks complete, what I've seen. Excellent, excellent. Okay. And we've got canteens. Looks like the leather could use a little bit of cleaning. No big deal, though. Minor wear, if that. Probably just storage. A little bit of wear on the buttons. No big deal. Let's see. Another canteen. Like a little bit of, a little bit of mold going on there. Whatever, no biggie. Maybe you got some preservative or something like that. Buttons in good shape over there. Cool. I'll take this all apart here in a minute. And then the rucksack. Let's see what we got going on here.
These are apparently for the helmet. I guess this little thing holds the helmet on, according to what I've been reading. Okay. Well, that looks good. Oh, look, a label. Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing that's someone's name. I'm guessing. I mean, it makes sense. I didn't. I didn't notice that this was an extra little feature. I knew it had this. Well, what people are calling a cup holder, but it's actually for a tent, apparently. But I didn't notice it had this little sewn-on label holder. That's pretty neat. A little bit of surface rust and wear on the bottom. Little buckles, the quick-release bu buckles. I love this leather smell. This is this is great. Yep, all the little leather straps on that side. All the leather straps on that side. That all attaches the bottom of that. Ooh, what do we got here? I guess that looks like ADMI 8, maybe? 28? Inspection stamps, probably. front portion I guess goes to your combat belt holds up front of your combat belt pretty darn stout pretty darn stout let me take a or open up the canteen see what we're working with there so here are the two canteens the leather was pretty well stuck together which was interesting I guess whatever preservative they put on acted like a mild glue, so getting it out of that little keeper there was a pain in the neck a bit. All the snaps worked fine. I'm not sure if the plastic on these caps are just made cheap or they just warped from heat, but, I mean, they work. They're just not the prettiest. No big deal. Some sort of fake pleather or something works as a sealer for the top of the bottles. The bottles look like they're extruded aluminum. No surprises on the inside of them, thankfully. No odd smells or funk. No leftover coffee. Little shot glass cups are pretty adorable. A similar condition with the other canteen. No issues. Roughly made lips. It's kind of neat how they're threaded like that. Didn't worry about cleaning them up at all. Get aluminum in your mouth. Have fun. Want to rip your lip? Even all the better. No problems with any of these snaps. Everything slid out just fine. Same sealer. Well, let's check out the bread bag. Now this bread bag is impressive. I've got some Polish bags and Finnish bags and I've got a Swiss one on the way, but this thing is massive, man. That is just a deep, large bag. And double layer of canvas on the strap that holds it all together, you know, to avoid flopping. Leather reinforcements on the underneath. I think this is for attaching your mess kit. And these two straps up top are for holding your sleeping bag or blanket or whatever was issued to them back then. Oddly enough, 
you got some thinner, very flexible webbing for holding the lid down to compare to this monster, which stands up on its own because <laughs> it's so reinforced. So they didn't want this bag to flop open, that's for sure. That That's a beast. Uh, I believe this was for the canteen, if I remember reading right. This D-ring, one of the canteens clips to it. I bought an extra canteen just to how dang cheap they were. They're mild. They're not exactly large, so. Shoulder strap thickens up at the top. And then tapers down at the bottom. Got your adjustable ring right here. And then it's... Oh, you can actually take the whole strap apart. I mean, they just leave this end flopping. They didn't actually make it a captured system. Like most bags that you see, you can just take the whole thing apart. That's good, I guess, for if you need to get out of your gear rapidly or something. Let's take a more detailed look at the large sack, the rucksack. Oh, that strap's got some nice flex and wear to it, so that's easy to use. That holds down your main lid. There's your helmet strap, helmet lid. I guess the, your helmet lid goes down in there. This center one, I haven't a clue what this little guy does. This is for your blanket or your shelter that goes across the top and loops around. Maybe this is for your helmet strap, maybe. Hold the strap down. And drawstring ties. See a number three there. It'd be neat if it had like a made in year or something. Very thin drawstring for closing the mouth of the pack up. Maybe change that out with some paracord or something stronger. So I'm sure this will wear out rather quickly. Interior of the bag is extremely simple. It's just a sack. No interior pockets. Nothing to organize. It's just a large sack. With a bunch of leather. Which smells absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to condition this leather up and make it look a lot darker. It's going to look nice and clean. Back is reinforced quite a bit. Got your wear corners right here. Oh yeah, one of these corners was sticking out in the bag. That's right. All your corners are reinforced with leather. Just for when you sit it down on the ground, you don't have to worry about those corners wearing out. Sweet, sweet. Let's get a group picture. I figured for the group shot, I'd take it outside. I have two queen size pillows folded up in the rucksack. It is not a small rucksack in any shape or form. I got one of the canteens clipped onto the front of the bread bag. I have my finished gas mask bag and two pairs of pants in this bag to fill it out a little bit. And this thing is a large bread bag. Absolutely love it. Outside, yeah, these definitely need to be cleaned up. And the smell of leather is amazing. <clears throat> so, as a summary for us all the way across the world, please, please, please fix your shipping. Please. As for a pers first purchase on a website that's extremely unfamiliar, being emailed later on saying, Oh, by the way, you owe me more money. It is mildly off-putting. 
So knowing the shipping fees right up front would be preferable. I'm not sure if that's a normal thing overseas. I'm not sure if they just did it just because of the United States, whatever. But there should be some sort of way to input in the system. Hey, my package weighs this much. It's going to charge this much money. Done. Pay it. Done. And then ship it. Not, you know, wait an extra day to ship it because I was undercharged. That just seems a little weird. Also, if you're shipping across the world, please put something a little bit more substantial than a single bag protecting this stuff. I mean, it's dirt cheap military surplus, but I paid money for it. And to have it just stuck in a plastic bag and shipped across the world, which has been taped up and barely holding together by the time it gets to me, is a little off-putting as well. Overall, though, I am pleased. I'm happy I purchased from you guys. The condition is great. All the straps came. I'm not sure if it's because I put that in the comments or it just happens to have all the straps. I know other websites are selling straps separately or not at all. So it's kind of nice to have the complete set with all the straps. So it's one stop shop. But I'm happy. I guess in the end, that's all that matters. I'm happy I once again put money into a bunch of military surplus that doesn't smell bad. It smells like a leather shop. I don't have to air it out. I mean, it's usable as it is right now, but I'm going to clean it up. And I'll probably put an update on the review that I'm going to put on their website. So, again, thank you very much, Military Surplus EU or Europe. And that is it for now.